Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for trying to finish in the top 5% globally series. Bit of a mouthful but hey that's what we're trying to do and it's for game week 32. So we start off by seeing how we did last game week or how we might have done last game week and then we look at what transfers we may need to make and who the captain is. Let's go. I've decided if I try and do this series again next season I need to try and somehow do this whole process of showing you what happened and showing you what to do find a better way of doing it because it <laughs> takes me hours to put all this together and I got a full-time job and then I got to edit the video so it's actually quite a long process which is fine it's a good learning uh, process I guess for me so maybe over the summer I'll see if I can write some code and make all this work a bit easier for me without losing too much of the quality, if there is any quality. Right, goalkeepers. Last game week, you'd have had one of these keepers playing. De Gea, who got six. Raya for five. Ramsdale for one. Pope for two. Kepa for six. Meslay for minus one. Of course, Meslay would have been on your bench. But for the sake of approximating scores, I'm counting him in here. So the average keeper score you'd have got was 3.2. The first set of defenders, you'd have played two or three of these. Trent, who got nine. Van Dijk, two. Trippier, one. Chilwell, one. James, one. Shaw didn't play. Gabriel, one. Zinchenko didn't play. That's for an average of five points. You'd have played two or three of these. Me for one. Estupian, two. Aguar didn't play. Botman, one. Pinnock, one. Castagna, one. Fafana 1, Kanate 2. So pretty rubbish. That's an average of 2.6. You'd have played two or three of these midfielders. Salah for 14, Fernandes for 3. And although he only got 3, he was absolutely brilliant. And I think at some point in the next two or three weeks, he should be getting some very, very big scores. But don't let me influence what you do. <laughs> Saka, yeah, he missed a penalty. Saka got 0 points. Madison for two, Grealish for seven, Gakpo for ten, Rashford didn't play, Odegaard for ten. So that was an average of 13.1, so that was all right. You'd have had two or three of these midfielders. Martinelli for five, Gibbs White for two, McAllister for two, Matoma for two, March for five, Jensen for one, Somerville for one, for an average of 5.1. You'd have had one or two of these forwards playing. Haaland for 12, Kane for 2, Darwin for 5, Jesus for 7, Tony for 2, Felix for 1. That's an average of 4.8 and you could have had one or two of these playing. Watkins for 16, Isaac for 2, Ings didn't play, Embremo for 2, Johnson for 2. That's an average of 5.5. And then finally your captains... These were the recommendations for last week. You'd have had one of these. Haaland for 12. So I'm saying these numbers because you obviously add them on because it was a captain. It gets doubled. Kane for 2. Salah for 14. Fernandes for 3. Tony for 2. Saka for 0. So the captain only got an average of 5.5 extra points. Globally, the average score for game week 31 was 55 points. If you did this system... And you picked the worst possible team, you might have got 10 this week. I've not checked if it was a legal team or possible, but it looks like 10. The average using the system was 44.8. The maximum was 96. And as always, I checked the people that I know are following this. I think two actually got red arrows. The other, I think five, all got green arrows. The two that I know have been following this strictly since the start of the season, they got green arrows. They're still in the top 5%. Somebody who's nearly been following it but has messed up two or three times because they either missed a week or played a card at the wrong time. They got a red arrow. But generally, it's still green. It's looking good for finishing top 5%. So I think we're doing all right. 622 subs. Thank you very much. If you like this sort of thing, subscriptions are very much appreciated as are likes, as are any comments. Thank you very much. So transfer talk. This is to remind me to say certain things. So where are we? Blank. We've got a blank this week, so there's four teams not playing. We'll look at those. And you may want to shuffle things around in your team. Now, it depends what sort of manager you are, what you want to do here. Someone like me, I'm a bit of a meddler. 
with my own team. So I tend to make quite a few transfers and take quite a few risks. And I'll take hits by transferring in players and then a week or two later transfer them out again. Other people are much more conservative and rather make as few moves as possible. And that's fine. So you need to decide what you're comfortable with going forward. So the four teams that are blanking are Brighton, Chelsea, Man City and Man United. So we want to try and have no more than three players from these three teams this week. And then hopefully we still get 11 players out. But it needs to be a legal formation. That's to remind me to say legal formation. So for example, if your three players that aren't playing all happen to be defenders, then you can't get a legal team out because you have to have at least three defenders and they've only got two. So what I thought I'd do, I'd go through each position and look at what's in the system and any recommended moves that you may want to consider. But you can do whatever you like. These are just suggestions. If I was following this, I would want to get at least 10 players out. I'd be very tempted to try and get 11, but I wouldn't do it if it meant losing a lot of money or I wasn't sure about the player I was bringing in. So your keepers are two of Pope, De Gea, Ramsdale, Kepper, Raya, Meslier. De Gea's blanking this week. Kepper's blanking this week. De Gea's doubling in game week 34. Pope has a future double game week not yet announced. And De Gea also has a future double game week not announced yet. As does Kepper. Now, what I would suggest is if and only if you have De Gea and Kepa, so there they are, then if you can afford to and it doesn't cost you too many hits, I think it's worth getting rid of Kepa and maybe getting Pope. Now, I don't know if any of you have those two keepers and there's a chance that if you do, you can't afford to do this or you don't want to do this and that's absolutely fine. By the way, we've all played our free hit in a previous week, so we're not free hitting this week but we've hopefully managed our team such that we don't need to free hit. Regarding defenders, there's Trippier, Trent, Shaw, Van Dijk, Gabriel, Zinchenko, James and Chilwell. They're the ones I show we look at on the first screen of defenders. Shaw blanks this week and he might still be injured. James blanks, Chilwell blanks. And additionally, the two Chelsea boys, since Lampard's come in, Chelsea seem to have gone from bad to worse. So all Chelsea players are a little bit dodgy at the moment. They may turn things around and may be worth having in a few weeks' time. But at the moment, even though they've got a double coming up, as we see, I don't think they're worth having. So Trent's got a double in 34, as has Shaw, as has Van Dijk. Trippier's got a future double game week, as has Shaw, as has James, as has Chilwell. But is there any point having James for two weeks if he scores one point? I mean, a double game week if he gets one point and one point? For two, it's just so risky at the moment, but Lampard may turn things around. The second page of defence, we have Canate, Estupnan, Botman, Fafana, Me, Pinnock, Aguard, Castagna. Things to consider are Estupnan's blanking, Fafana's blanking, Canate's got a double in 34, Estupnan's got a double in 34, Aguard's got a double in 34, Estupnan's got a future double game week, as has Botman, as has Fafana. So my suggestion when it comes to transfers and defenders, if you've got any of James, Chilwell or Fafana, I think it's absolutely fine to move these on. And you may want to move these on even if you have got 11 players playing. But don't feel pressurised to do it. But if you've got fewer than 10 players playing and you've got one or more of these, this is definitely a move worth doing. And then if, according to your funds, get one of... Trent, Trippier, Canate or Gabriel. Um, Trippier, everyone's got Trippier or nearly everyone has Trippier so it's worth having him and it protects you when he has a good week. You won't fall behind from that. It may be that Liverpool have now turned the corner and they have got some nice games coming up. Gabriel's got a nice game this week as well but they Arsenal don't have any double game weeks. So any of those defenders on the left I think are worth swapping for any of those defenders on the right. Regarding the midfielders, we've got Salah, Fernandes, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard, Madison. Fernandes blanks, Grealish blanks and Rashford blanks. They all blank this week. Salah has a double in 34. Fernandes has a double in 34. Grealish has a double in 34. Rashford has a double in 34. And Gakpo has a double in 34. Fernandes has a future double game week, as does Grealish, as does Rashford. Now... This is a little bit dodgy. 
Fernandez, Rashford and Grealish, you may want to sell one of these. But if you do, we really want to try and bring them back by game week 34. It's okay to miss out on game week 33, but game week 34, it'd be nice to have them back. Definitely want Rashford back, assuming he's fit. Fernandez is brilliant, but he is expensive. And so you may not be able to get him back. But what I'm suggesting is if you have these and you want to move them on, the sensible picks would be Salah, who's definitely worth getting and keeping if you can get him, Gakpo or Odegaard. Now Odegaard's not got a good game in game week 34, but in 32 and 33 his game's all right. So if you can afford to go Fernandez to Salah and you've only got maybe 10 or fewer players playing, I think it's absolutely worth, absolutely worth doing. And of course, it, you can do more than one of these transfers we're showing you. It may cost you a minus four hit, but if it helps you afford things, that's fine. And if you've got a question you want to ask me in the comments, I'll try and see it before the deadline and try and answer if you're unsure about anything. Um, and then the other midfielders, we've got the three Brighton boys, Martinelli, Gibbs White, Jensen, Somerville. Three Brighton boys don't play this week, but they double in 34 and they've actually got two future double game weeks. So after this game week, we definitely want to have three Brighton players, if at all possible. So it may be that the only way you can get 10 or 11 players playing this week is to move on one or more of your Brighton midfielders. The only one really worth getting is Martinelli from this page, I think. Um, like I said, you don't have to do any of these transfers, but these would be my suggestions if you do want to do some. Of the forwards, we're looking at Haaland, Kane, Tony, Darwin, Jesus, Felix. Felix, he's in Chelsea. Felix is a brilliant player, but anyone who plays for Chelsea, they just seem to play worse. And so maybe it's time now to move on Felix. He's just not doing what he should be doing. So Haaland blanking in 32, as is Felix. Haaland then doubles in game week 34, as does Darwin. And then Haaland has a future double game week, as does Yao Felix. But it's not worth holding on to Felix, in my opinion, for that. And then the second page of slightly cheaper strikers, we have Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Johnson and Mbwemo. The only thing to say here is Ings doubles in 34 and Isaac has a future double game week at some point. So if you have Felix, I strongly suggest you move him on. And the suggested transfer would be, depending on your money, Jesus is worth getting, Watkins or Isaac, any of those are good. Of those three, Jesus has got the easiest next couple of game weeks and Arsenal obviously going for the, the Premiership title, so he'll hopefully do well. Isaac has got a double coming up, or Isaac has got a double coming up. So any of those are worth doing. Regarding the bench, right, so that's all the transfers out of the way. With the bench, we just look at who to bench and then the starting 11 sorts itself out. It's quite likely we don't even need to bother with the bench talk this week because you've only got 10 or 11 people playing anyway. But I'm going through this just in case you've got 12 playing. So with the goalkeepers, it's actually the same order as last week, which is why I've not moved it around. So I'd say Meslier, if you've got him, he's on your bench. If you don't have him but Raya, he's on your bench. Then Kepa and De Gea. Now, of course, neither of those two are actually playing. So if you had, for example, Raya and Kepa, doesn't matter which one you put on your bench because Rayo will end up playing. And then it'd be Pope and the best keeper this week, potentially, is going to be Ramsdale. Now I'm going to show you, I think, nine players this week. And obviously any players that aren't playing, you can put on your bench. Apart from that, if you find out you've got too many people this week, you've got 11 outfield or more players playing, this would be my benching suggesting suggestion. I can't speak. <laughs> this would be my suggested benching order. So the first one you see would go first on your bench. That would be Aguad, Somerville, Mbremo, Jensen, Gibbs White, Pinnock, Me, Castagna, Botman. Now to be fair, Castagna's potentially got quite an easy fix this week. Some of these may well get points. And it's quite possible, like I said, None of you are going to have more than 11 playing players, so this bench talk doesn't matter. As for the captains, who gets to wear the old mule hat? Well, I think Salah should be. If you've got Salah, I would suggest you captain Salah. 
If you don't have Salah, but you have Saka, I'd suggest he gets to wear the old mule hat. If you have neither of those, pretty much of a muchness, but then Martinelli. But any attacking Arsenal or Liverpool player should be all right. So the next three suggestions would be Jesus, Gakpo, Trent. So if you've got at least two from this page, that's great. Make one your captain, one your vice captain. If you can't get a captain and vice captain from this page, I'd suggest go for any other Arsenal or Liverpool player that you've got. And if you've still got space for who should I vice captain or captain, I'd say just go for your most expensive player and you're probably going to be all right. Hopefully that all made sense. Sorry, it was a little bit more than five minutes, which is was my original target. Try and get these videos down to five minutes. But when we have doubles and blanks, it's a little bit too difficult. I hope, <laughs> I hope it made sense. And I... If you've got any questions about your team and you need help, that's fine. Drop it in the comments or you can DM me, of course, on Twitter and I'll try and respond to you. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.